Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Team Genet Next Generation. Well, our special call with Mr. Joel Freeman himself, the co-creator of Core Force. And we are super excited to uh, have you here to talk to us, Joel. I really, really, really appreciate you taking the time. You know that, guys, they don't, the trainers don't do this kind of stuff. Like, Joel jumping and taking the time out of his night to, to be here and answer you guys' questions is, that's a big, big deal. And we're really excited. And we really, 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 I want you to know we really appreciate it sincerely. So, uh, yeah. And so, I don't know if uh, I mentioned it to you, but I don't know if you are. So, a lot of us are in, like, our third week right now of quarter force, which by the way, guys, who freaking loves this program? Like it's one of your favorite programs you've ever done. Like everybody, like I love this program sincerely. It's amazing. So you guys, you, you killed it. Dude. You really did kill it. Yeah. You're lucky because that was the one that you're really worried about. I know, I know, I know. Um, we, you were worried about it. Um, yeah. You think you were worried about it. Oh, <laughs> we <no>. definitely <laughs> So who wants to start off with, uh, with asking Joel a quick question about what you've got going on right now? Jessica, you want to go? Shoot. Mine's totally just all about me. Like I asked all my team what they wanted to know and nobody said anything. So fine. I'm going to make it completely about me. I do like a mostly plant-based diet and 21 day fix, you know, had rebooted their plan for the kind of vegan, um, you know, just the differences in a vegan diet. I just wanted your opinion on if following the quarter force plan, the way it is, is um, appropriate. Cause I've just been following the 21 day fix plan still because I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 look, the, it's very simple. The, 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 uh, as if you guys are familiar, uh, familiar with the 21 day fix eating plan and they look at the quarter force eating plan, there's not a map the amount of difference in terms of the in the formula right the formula works so that's why we we left the formula the way it is um it's just the way you progress your containers or your calories throughout the program so it's one thing if you start on week one um in whatever your calorie bracket is and you know whatever plan you are a b c or d but as you progress in weeks two and three you definitely want to follow the quarter force eating plan because we are making you work more. So it's the same as I say, it's, it's basically think of your body as a car. If you're going to make your car drive farther, you have to put more fuel into it. So, um, it, you know, we've gotten this a couple of times. You're not the first as people to say that, uh, that they're using something, you know, that's already in existence because the 21 day fixed meal plan is something that people are familiar with and they're in, and it is very easy to follow. Um, but it's not that much different in terms of the formula. So use the formula and then just follow the eating plan and making sure you're getting the right amount. Uh, in your guys' case, if you're using the containers, you're, you're making sure that you're giving the right amount of containers for the week that you're doing the program. Because if you don't start starving your body, you're going to see adverse effects. Yeah, so like I added the extra fruit and that kind of stuff um, and just kept it the same as far as the things. So. Yeah, look, for, and for anybody who's a, a different type of diet, like vegan or, or dairy-free or vegetarian, you know, anything that's not um, anything that's not me, which I just eat cheeseburgers and pizza every day if I could, um, you know, and you guys have to change things around. So as long as you're getting, you know, hopefully you know your macros, hopefully you know uh, your containers and what you need. So um, then as long as you're feeling good and, you know, the, just don't be afraid to give your body a little bit more, I guess is the easiest way to answer that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to eat food, guys. It's okay. Food's good. Unfortunately, that's not typically my problem. So well, I guess I should clarify. It's the type of food that you're eating, but uh, it is the type of food you're eating. But I am specifically talking about the quarter force eating plan. Um, if you follow it, like again, and I, I think on the last time we had this call, uh, I was with you guys, we were talking calories and things like that. You know, when, we were, when I was on program prep for this, uh, for the cover shots of this program, that's on the, the, the quarter force cover kit. I was on over 4,000 calories a day on this eating plan because I was, we were on, we were in test groups. We were teaching two classes a day. I was in prod dev nonstop. And I was, you know, I think it was 1.5 calories in one day that I was eating on this, the most fit shredded jack I've ever been in my life. And it would definitely had a lot to do with that. So don't be afraid of eating the right amount of food. A lot of it. It's good stuff. That's intense. 4,000 calories a day. I was, dude, I, it, it, I, all the time. It was just constant. Like I had, like, I, would, I couldn't even take a break to talk because I was just constantly eating. Yeah, it was a lot of food. I've never eaten that much ever. And I, I kept getting fitter. It was crazy. Well played. Yeah. Francine, what about you? You had a question, right? 
Hi. Um, I want to know what is your favorite move in the whole program? And don't say Sphinx Blasters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got nothing to say to you then, if that's the case. Um, <laughs> You know, it's funny. We uh, so yeah, we do get that question a lot. Actually, people ask like, "Yo, what's your favorite move? What's your favorite workout?" And it, it's kind of funny. Uh, never, it's different because this is the first program we ever wrote. Um, you know, we fought things for other you know, other people have written them before. So you always had your favorites, and you're not your favorite. And and I know it sounds kind of cliche, but it's like if we didn't love it, we didn't put it in there. Um, I, I swear to God, like it really comes down to that. Like Jericho and I wrote this program from start to finish and we went over all the moves and the combos and it's like, if we didn't like it, it didn't go in. So there's a lot of stuff that we went through and like, I liked, I might like something that she didn't and vice versa. And we kind of found the middle ground. So in terms of that, it really, honestly, there isn't one thing that in this program where I'm like, Oh, I hate this. Um, but in terms of workouts, I honestly, I love power school. I think it's, it's, it's just ridiculously brutal, but it's so much fun, especially because I love the Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, component to it. Um, and then I love MMA shred because of the, uh, the Muay Thai component to that. Um, in terms of moves themselves, I love any, anything Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the hip escape, toe tap, the um, anything like that. Those are, those are my, usually my favorite ones. I love ground game stuff. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. The sit-up escape, too. The sit-up escape is one of my faves. Yeah, that sit-up escape took me forever to figure out, man. I was so confused. That, and I still, Sphinx Blasters, I still struggle with them. They're, they work, but, man. I I'm, like, I'm like, get that booty up in the air. Yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah, well, look, the ultimate goal is to be able to, I mean, everybody's like, ultimate goal is to be able to do them on your toes. Um, but yeah, to be able to do them for a full 50 seconds, it, it's pretty awesome. And you will get to it because, and everyone's like, well, I can't do those and I can't do push-ups. The great thing about all this, and, and you know, this is the thing to always remind people because especially with push-ups, push-ups are very challenging, especially for women. We know that you know, upper body strength isn't something that most women go for right off the bat. So we, we get a lot of this. This is not anything new. But the reminder on it is every exercise in core to force is based on strength endurance capabilities and your strength and your strength endurance will improve if you keep challenging yourself now obviously kick height has to do with other things like flexibility and that will also change but in terms of the actual exercises a sphinx blaster you guys we're only working we're working muscles muscles grow muscles will get stronger you just have to keep progressing it so it is possible so if someone to say i can't do a push-up um is bullshit basically they can't just <laughs> progressing it that's all it is totally perfect Nicole, do you have a question? Well, I feel like an idiot because I'm the only one not on your program yet. <laughs> but I actually you said it. I did not say it. I did a sneak peek, sneak peek, and um, and I have a group that's doing 21 Day Fix, so I'm I'm on it with them. But um, we start in January, and we're yeah. we're excited. We did the sneak peek. I mean, I was actually sore for like three days. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. But we're looking forward to it. So, um, but uh, thanks for making the program. You guys look like, like you're having a lot of fun. And one of the things I know about certain videos, the instructors are kind of like irritating and whatever. But if I listen to you guys, you guys are motivating. You guys are pushing me through to the next step. And that was just a sneak peek. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really looking forward to our January. Thank you. Uh -huh. No problem. Uh, it is fun to hear someone that hasn't experienced dynamic strength or power sculpt yet. For everyone else on this call that has experienced <laughs> that, we can all do the evil cackle because we know that uh, Nicole is in for some surprises. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Megan. Okay. So I actually have a few questions. I'll just keep it to like the one that I struggle with, with on a lot of programs. So I do my workouts first thing in the morning. And I also usually tend to like 30 minute workouts just because I get up super early and run out the door. So, but I do really enjoy this program. Uh, probably one of my favorites so far, just a little bit funner. Um, but on the days that you have the abs, like that 15 minute abs after 45 minutes. Yeah honestly, this is a little bit too much for me. Is it okay to do it later or am I going to get the best results if I do it right after? Does it matter? 
Uh, so great question. And there's, there's been quite a few people actually that have, that have asked this question. Um, because, yeah, we, we know that the, there has been the tendency of workouts lately of shorter, shorter duration workouts. Right. And we also know that the science behind it and everything else has come out like, Hey, you only need to work out for eight minutes for abs. Um, if anybody knows what that movie reference is from two points for you. Eight minute abs. Anybody? Okay. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we do know that, you know, like dynamic strength is, you know, 46 minutes and power sculpt is, is just over 30, I think 35, 37 minutes. And then, uh, yeah, then some days we have the stackers, the, the core kinetics, which is an extra 15 minutes. So we know that that tends to be a little bit of a problem, especially for people like you who get up super early. Now the program is designed to where you to, for optimal results, you do those back to back. Um, that is, uh, it's for, you know, one, uh, in terms of building strength and endurance and challenging your body, um, especially as, you know, there's no warm up going into core kinetics. So, um, you know, there's, that's why we stack it at the end of it. And you, you know, core kinetics is not necessarily a standalone. It's always a stack. Same thing with five minute core on the floor. So best case scenario is to do them back to back. If you're unable to do them back to back, then yes, you can split them up because you can, you know, like you're still going to get benefits if you, you, you do core, um, core connects like in the evening, as long as you warm up just a little bit before you start going into any sort of movement. Now, if it's a matter of, if it's just a matter of timing, I don't know. I know people, I know you guys get up early. I get up at 5am myself to go box and the idea of getting up 15 minutes earlier than that just sounds horrendous. But I guess my answer is like, it's only a couple days a week. It's not every single day. We don't stack it every single day. And, and like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you on that part, for that part, because it's like, you have to make that decision. If you like, if you want to see it and it's in the way the quarter force can work in its best possible scenario is to follow the workout counter the way it's written. That's, that's where all the test group testimonials came from and everything like that. Um, but if you stay, if you, you split them, not the end of the world may not just be the best possible results that you would get otherwise. Yeah. So that's okay to say, suck it up and get up early. That's yeah. Funny. I was trying not to say it, but I guess I like, you know, it's like, you know, Tough shit. Um, yeah, I, set your <laughs> alarm, Megan. <laughs> yeah, I like to hit snooze on all three of my alarms that are going off at the same time. You know what? Look, I, I, I seriously, I'm the same way, and and I get up between five and five thirty every single morning. So my wife does too. She gets ready for work, and then I get up, and I'm like, well, I'm awake, and I go over to Santa Monica and box, and I have to get up that early actually just so, to avoid traffic in LA. That's like actually what I have to do to get there. It still takes me half hour, but I think what I've found is. It, like, but I get up and do it because I love to do it. It's something that I, like, I wake up and I'm excited to go box. And that's why I choose to box in the morning because otherwise going to the gym in the morning, like I'll, I love to lift weights, but there's no effing way I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. to go lift weights or 4.30 in the morning to go work out by myself and lift a couple dumbbells. Like that, nothing about that sounds fun to me. So it's like, you know, maybe – it, it, hopefully this program is fun and you're enjoying it and, you know, maybe looking from a standpoint of finding something. That's why I tell people, it's like, look, find something you enjoy, find something that this is going to like, that you don't mind waking up for a couple extra days a week uh, you know, to get it. So good oh. for thought. I don't know. No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I, mean, I kind of wondered that on, even on 21 day fix where it's got the, you know, the five minute apps in that program, nowhere, at least with your guys's, it says like what days to do what, which my other question is. So in the first week or two, I can't really remember when you guys start putting in the um, five minutes on the floor. Mm -hmm. You guys, is it, are you intending us not to do any of those extras or is it when you want? Cause one thing I read when I just kind of briefly went through it was any day that you're not doing the 15 minute one. I can't think of what it's called. Minutes. Yeah. So do you, you just follow it exactly how it's on the calendar or do you guys? Well, look, the, 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 the calendar is written again. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is we wrote this program and I know I said, I said this on the last time we were all together. Uh, we wrote this program for the people who are not working out, who have never exercised before. You know, we didn't, not for, not for coaches, not for people who have done other don't, 21 day fix before or combat or pump. You know, this is for the, this is for, this is for a newbie. This is for people who have no idea what health and fitness programming looks like. So when it comes to the calendar, that's what we designed the calendar. So where um, it's as simple as possible. We would just say, follow the calendar. That's all you got to do. Just follow the calendar and do the workouts that are on the calendar and you will see results. 
Um, that's what our test groups did. That's what we made them do is they followed the calendar in its entirety to a T, follow the eating plan in its entirety to the letter. Um, and they saw the results with it. So in terms of, of, you know, if you guys, and you've been doing, you've done other programs, you, you have an idea of health and fitness program at this point. Um, and you, and look, my wife, she's starting, she's jumping into quarter force herself and doing it at night and she's a lifter. And so, and she's also very fit. And so we did day one and she did MMA speed and it's only 27 minutes and she was drenched and she was like, okay, but I kind of want more. So then we did core kinetics, you know, so like, because it's, it's so we, but we know that. And I think it's kind of the same thing. And I would say the same thing with you, Megan, and everybody else. It's like, if you guys have been doing this for a while and if you finish, look, if you finish MMA shred and you feel like you got more then throw five minute core on the floor in there. No, it's like, that's not a problem. If you feel physically up to it and you're not, and your form is going to be compromised and absolutely nothing wrong with pushing yourself a little bit further. There's nothing wrong with that. Just the, the, the thing to keep in mind is, we did this for the new, we did this for the, the noobs, uh, the people that have no idea what the hell they're doing. So we want them to just follow it and, and keep it simple for them. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, could I, I want to piggyback on that. I've got a quick question about exactly yeah. what you're just talking about, Joel. Um, if you're going to, and we get a lot of people that ask this, and I actually know I, I'm thinking about doing the same thing. Um, so we've got a cruise through, um, through our, from Jessica is coming, uh, coming up at the end of the January. And so I want to continue doing this program until then I want to be kind of cruise ready. And I was actually thinking about, cause I used to love training with weights as well. And I was thinking, Hey, I want to do the workout in the morning and then come home and add like 30 minutes of weight in it too. Just cause I feel like I get a little bit soft if I don't, you know what I mean? On the, but I was like, I don't know how to modify a, is that, does it make any sense? Should that be done? What do you tell people when they're saying, I want to add in an extra workout to these and B, you know, is it a good idea? And B, if so, what does the nutrition plan look like to modify it to make that make sense so you don't move backwards? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, this is a, um, this is like, you, you, we're, we're in like, a, I mean, like, we're like the, the questions about the, the eating plan and the, the basics, I think like the first time that we did a call, that I did a call with you guys is that was, of course, freshman year for people doing either doing a quarter force workout or I'm boxing every single day and then on alternating days I'm still lifting I'm still going into the weight room and I'm still lifting myself that's that's what works and so uh, Justin it's, it's absolutely there's nothing wrong with it it's simply working you know finding things that work best for you um, if you choose and that's also why there's a, a, a hybrid calendar in the workout plan too where we and we use each tools as possible but you'll see in there, there's eight by eight, there's grab bag power, there's, there is strength training. Um, the best way to do it, the easiest way to, to keep this in, in your brain is you're doing that. If you want to do quarter, you do it in its Strength and power sculpt are the days that you do not lift because you're going to be doing a lot of strength training and body weight exercises. But the days that you're going to do MMA speed, MMA shred, power, plyo, you do that in the morning, you feel good. Then you go lift in the evening, but, uh, and then the, the, in terms of nutrition, you're just going to, if you're following the, the, the eating plan, then you probably just, the, I'd say the easiest thing is just go up a, just go up a plan, just go up a step, um, add a couple calories to it and see how you, a couple containers to it, whatever it is. I don't know containers at all guys. I suck at that. Um, I just know I eat, um, so I know the foods that I eat typically would go, so you add a couple proteins, uh, and a couple of carbs and see how you feel. You know, your body's going to tell you if you're starting to not get enough. Because especially in the – I do the same thing. I do my cardio in the morning, uh, and I'll lift in the evening. I knew if I didn't eat enough that day. So just see how you feel with that. Fantastic. Thank you. Anybody that has not asked a question that wants to ask a question, can you raise your hand real quick? I can't see because we're frozen. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can hear, just can't see. For anybody that has questions, can ask questions, anybody. Yeah. yeah. Just unmute yourself and go ahead. Oh, there we go. Nobody has questions. I can, I can ask more. I was just kind of waiting to see. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you probably don't just based on what you just said, but um, I was curious. <laughs> well, you said you don't know much about the container. So I was wondering <laughs> if you um, – your test group, do you guys have, do they have a, like a specific meal plan that you guys followed 
that like your guys' team maybe gave them or did you just tell them? No, they, they, it, was the, it was the core to four seating plan that they okay. were on. Yeah, so it was, no, it was like, specific. Right? I, I guess I mean like more specific, like, cause I've seen that you guys have like the, um, in the book it had like a, an example of what you would eat that week. And it had like the oatmeal, or not oatmeal, what is it? Uh, Greek yogurt, yogurt mm -hmm. and the fruit. I was wondering if they followed that every single day that week. Oh, that, so like, what, that what, particular one, not just. So what were they actually eating is your question? Yeah. Okay, uh, so, so we, we had two, we've had two test groups so far. We had the original test group, uh, non-coach test group that we had uh, started, it was Jan last, started last January. Holy God, it was last January. That's crazy. Uh, it was almost a year ago. Uh, and we had uh, two, two groups of about 30 people, one group in the morning, one group at night, and they came into the beach my office every single day, six days a week, and they had, they, we ran them through the workouts, and then they, they were on the same. So they were on the exact eating plan that – the core to force eating plan is um, we teamed up with a, a, a meal prep company uh, called Helena that's, that's based in LA and they, we gave them the, the nutritionist that we were working with the beach body gave them the eating plan uh, for every single person and said, okay, this, this is the plan. It's this many calories that this person's on and then made sure that the containers, I don't want to say the container system, but the portion system was used. So and Paletta is a company that, Beachbody has worked with in the past with other test groups, so they they're familiar with the portion system. So all the all the people in the test group got the correct portions that you guys are doing the exact same thing. Um, so that was a very controlled. That's like the most controlled environment uh, for a test group ever because Jericho and I are take, running them through the workouts, and then we know that someone else is measuring their food for them. So um, that was great. Now, the second test group was the coaching test group, which just finished up the, the Beach White Coaches. And that was the first opportunity for us to watch uh, how people did it themselves. And because they're all, all around the country. Same thing, though. They follow the eating plan in its entirety. And they some of them came up with their own recipes. Some of them used the recipes from Spixen because that's probably, the one, that's probably the best book to use. Uh, to get recipes based on the portion system and they got just as great results. So they're eating, you know, probably I would say, you know, again, long answers short, they're eating everything that you guys are eating or, um, or would eat on this. Yeah. It's real food though. It's real food. Right. Uh, then I'll ask, I've got, I've got a question and I don't know if this is something that you would, that you would be able to, to kind of give us light on or not. But uh, what would you say up. if you've got a, like a shoulder, some sort of sh like a light shoulder impingement, or actually it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Shoulder. I can't do any push-ups, So I, I stick with plank a lot because I can't physically. Is that what you would recommend? Like for all the push-up moves and all that stuff, would you recommend just like, you know, or, and I know it's, it's hard. Yeah. Shoulder, I look, shoulder impingements suck, man. I'm sorry. It, it, they really do. Um, just get rid of it. You know, just go in there and um, have them clean it out. But it, uh, it, you know, it, everybody's different. Every injury is different. Every impingement is different. And you know, you, I think if you if you know you can't do a push up, if you can't even do a wall push up, then you you know just keep. I guess it, it, the best answer is just keep regressing to the point where you can still do something. So if it is just a plank, that's what you're doing. Um, it, it definitely is a challenge. But uh, I don't know if you tried wall push ups. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, just you know, maybe take because uh, just taking that angle might allow you to get a little bit more movement. So maybe just give that a shot. Perfect. Awesome. Um, I do have a question about um, the performance line and how you feel that that in uh, incorporates with the program. So the beat by performance line, um, the the main three that that have always kind of been uh, suggested or say that work best for for quarter force are uh, energize energize is obviously great and uh, recover and recharge so those are the three and you know uh, hydrate 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 is designed for longer duration exercising um, you know usually anything that's past 45 minutes to an hour um, and you know that's what dr. Nemo always talks about in his if you look at the the original research and what they say about it, it's definitely for longer duration exercises so um, and in quarter force you're not typically you're averaging between 30 and 45 minutes not to say you can't have it um, dynamic strength with the stacker you might need it your body might definitely want it 
but in terms of the um, for recover, recover is great. Um, and then after you know, for people who are doing this, recharge is definitely going to help you feel better the next morning. So um, and they're freebies, they're calorie freebies, so they don't count against you on your plan as long as you're not you know going crazy with your mixes. So <laughs> it doesn't mean you can mix anything with them, but they typically don't count against you in your calories. Like Shakeology counts as a container, I believe. So um, I, I, did I get that right? All right. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. I can be taught. Um, yeah. So Shakeology counts, but the containers, uh, the uh, the performance products don't. Perfect. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. What would you say to somebody that they're like, okay, I just need a program that I can work out to, but they don't really want to follow the nutrition plan? Like, like straight up, what would you say? I'd say you can do whatever the hell you want. Just don't come to me when it didn't work. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's like pretty simple. It's uh, like, and it's funny. I actually got a, um, there was a comment on one of my posts not too in recently. Uh, I actually might've been in the Joel Freeman fitness, my Joel Freeman fitness page, like the support page uh, for everybody. And I think is getting Jack and he, he kind of said the same thing. He was like, I just finished the first, I just finished the program 30 days. Uh, I didn't lose any weight. Um, you know, what am I doing wrong? And so then it was funny because, you know, other, I love watching it. I always usually let it coast for a second because I want to see what everyone, and always, every, people always jump in uh, and have their own opinions about it. But then I just simply said, I was like, well, you know, what were your measurements like? Did you follow the eating plan? And he's like, well, no, but I eat really clean. Obviously, you don't. So yeah. it, it, it's like, you know, there you go. It, it just is – I if people want specific results and they have to fall, they have to do something different. And you know, that's, it's, I think he's a perfect example. And so I was like, look, man, you, you can do whatever you hell you want, but you can't do half of something and expect to get the full results out of it. It's just, it's not going to happen like that. Now, are you going to, if let's just say for instance, that you do core to force the workout calendar in its entirety, you follow that, but you're just, you're doing your own eating plan. Will you still see results? Probably. Are you, are you going to get some sort of physical results out of it? Absolutely. There's no way that you can do the core force program without your body having some physiological results happen. Specific results, I can't tell you what they're going to be. You're going to develop some more core strength, but that's, that's as far as it goes. I'm not going to tell you anything past that unless you follow the eating plan. So, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't have one without the other. So I would tell them, as I said, people are always like, well, can I drink wine on this? I'm like, you can do whatever you want. Like, you guys are adults. You're a big boy now. You're a big girl now. Like you can do it, but don't come to me when you didn't get all the results that you wanted. Right. No, that's awesome. Who else has questions? I don't like to sugarcoat things. Tell them to quit being big babies. I appreciate oh, that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I do sugarcoat things. So I let other people not do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, you know, people that follow me on Instagram and stuff like that, uh, you guys should know this by now. I, I don't sugarcoat things at all. And it's, if I'm, if I'm going to prep for something then I'm going to prep for it, I'm going to go all out, but I'm not prepping for anything right now. I'm just enjoying my life. I'm, I'm, I love being married to my wife and it's Christmas and it's been Thanksgiving and I'm going to, I get up and I work out and I'm like right now I work, yeah, I might work out twice a day, but after this call, I'm going to have a beer and watch football. <laughs> it's going to happen. Right. And, it, and I had an amazing steak and a glass of wine last night. And tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm in a box and I'm going to do, and during the week I, I eat pretty clean and it's just, it's, it's very routine for us. My wife and I, we get up, we work out, we work out through the day and then we go to bed and it's not crazy. Like the week nights are not crazy, but the weekends it's like, we're like, whatever, it's having fun, having a good time. Gotta have some balance, right? That's it. That's all it is, guys. It's all about balance. It's not a path. It's not or excuse me, it's not the wagon. This this whole wagon cliche bull crap. Like stop falling off a wagon. Just don't get on a wagon. Find a path that you don't have to fall off of. So apparently your balance sucks. So stay off a wagon. And <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Who else had a question? I don't want to uh, leave anybody out here. Anybody anybody else have another question at all? I've got a totally, again, totally selfish question. Um, I, I think that when I'm doing some, throwing some of the punches, I'm getting my like torso and hips to rotate, but I've been starting to have like a kind of knee issue on my uh, rear leg in my dominant stance. And I'm kind of wondering, maybe I'm not twisting that um, foot enough. You know what I'm saying? Like could be hyperextending. And I know that that's not something I could probably 
uh, necessarily get super duper help with since we're not like actually doing the move. But does that make sense? Like, because it's just that one knee that has been starting to give me trouble when I'm throwing punches and whatnot. And I'm just thinking maybe I'm just not um, twisting my feet, my feet enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. It's, I mean, look, some of the stuff is like, it, I, I can tell you what is very typical for people who are not normally used to being in a fight stance. The yeah. most typical thing that we see people do uh, are very, whereas where your feet are very surfboard like, which means that you have almost your right foot or your left foot, whatever your back leg is, is almost directly behind your front leg to where it's like if you were standing on a surfboard. And if you go back and watch the learn it and work it, you'll see the first one in from uh, in front of MMA speed is we put the line right down the middle and you're supposed to have more space in between your feet to where you're hit. So you, you want to think about this. Your target is in front of you. So you don't want to have your body completely turned to the side because then when you start to turn like this, that puts undue pressure and tension onto your back knee. Okay. So that's why you're supposed to have more of a split position like this. This is how your feet should look. Right. Where you have a line, like if my head is aligned, that's where the split position should be. And then you have your feet, one here, one here, with your back heel off the ground. That allows you to have the rotation. So what I would do is go back, watch the learn it, work it, and just put a piece of tape down on, on the ground when you do the workout and make sure the entire time that you do the MMA workouts, each foot is on the other side of, of the line. Perfect. If you ever go back like this, you have – because what you're going to do then is you – there's no way that your back foot – and leg can twist enough to get the rotation and then when you do twist enough you can get the hyperextension. so um check your stance I, I would almost bet money that that's your that's where you're at and also make sure that in your stances guys that you are balancing your weight between both legs this is not a, a forward lunge this is not a back lunge the, the stance is meant to be where you're able to you know, you could, ju you could pulse forward and back on the balls of your feet and your weight is evenly distributed. That's why uh, it goes back to, you know, people ask the questions, like, well, how come we don't switch stances? You don't have to switch stances when you're doing MMA combinations because we're on the transverse plane. We're on the rotational plane of movement. But as long, but you have to make sure that your, your balance is set between both legs. So make sure you're not putting too much weight on the front leg or too much weight on the back leg. Find your, find your middle. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Maybe. That brings up a question for me. I, I'm horrible with the kicks. Um, but one thing I did notice is it seems like when you guys say non-dominant stance, that leg is easier for me. What? So if I, I'm right-handed and so I have my left leg forward most of the time. So then whenever I do the non-dominant, I'm just way more steady, I think on, on the other leg. So that, the first leg is like super awkward for me. And then whenever I do the non-dominant leg or whatever, that's when I'm like freaking falling back. I mean, you should, I'm a hot mess. I haven't posted one video. I'm such a hot mess. <laughs> and uh, I like workout videos. <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, when you're in a, when you're in your dominant stance, your dominant hand is, is the back hand, right? Okay. So if you're right handed, then that's and the, the point of that is because, um, you typically have more control from your dominant from a dominant with a dominant side. That means that my front like there's no power in a jab, right? A jab is a front punch. It's supposed like jabs are meant to um, jabs are meant to stun and blind your opponent. Crosses are meant to knock them out. It's like so, like the taps pop 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 boom, and then you knock them out. It's the same thing with the and then in terms of the kicks though, kicks change a little bit. So you're never going to do. Um, like for instance, when you do a switch, anything from the front leg, we're always, it's called a switch, right? A switch knee, a switch snap kick, a switch roundhouse, because you can't just lift your leg and have power. So that's why you have to switch, load your leg, fire, reset. Um, so it's a little bit different when your kicks, when you're firing kicks from a dominant stance, it's not the same mentality as if you're firing punches from a dominant stance, because the kicks, your, 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 your uh, like your rear snap kick is going to be quite powerful because that's your rear leg and you're pushing through it, but it's not your dominant side. So all of a sudden, if I switch you into your non-dominant side, or we say non-dominant stance, now your dominant leg is in front. And if I tell you to do a switch snap kick, you're going to load your dominant leg. So of course there's going to be more power. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's, it's a little, I know it sounds funky, but it's, it's like, it, it doesn't, it may not make a whole lot of sense, but like when you're in your dominant stance and you're firing with your dominant punch, 
it's going to be completely different than if you're in your dominant stance and you're firing a kick with your dominant leg. It's just the way the body works. The answer to it, though, is you continue to do it, and that's why we switch everybody uh, occasionally to work your non-dominant side, and you'll learn, you'll learn, your body will learn. The kinesthetic awareness will kick in. Your motor learning will happen, um, and you will be able to do it, and I promise you that, and look, you guys, I mean, we've, Jerick and I have been doing this for a long time, and I, there is zero difference for me switching sides. And it's because I just continue to do it. I mean, we filmed this entire program in our non-dominant stance uh, for filming purposes so we can make sure that the majority of the population can mirror us. No problem. I can switch back and forth, no problem. So it just you just have to continue to do it. Great point. I almost said I go both ways, but I'm glad I didn't. I just wanted to make sure like whenever I was doing it that I'm not like doing it opposite and not knowing it because I've never really done fighting or you know kickboxing any of those kinds of things so I'm like watch me be just some dumbass sitting here so, um, I yeah and look as long as you are following us and as long as you're doing it the way we're doing it and, and doing the switch right then then you're fine does, does anybody that hasn't had, asked a question yet, does anybody have a question that hasn't had a chance? Becky, did you have a question? I thought earlier. Oh. There you go. There you he go. answered it already. Oh, he did? Yeah. All right. Would anybody like to take a moment and like tell him, you know, how Quarter Force has helped you guys? Like what you like about it? Like... Because I'm just totally... Well, Nicole would love to tell me how Quarter Force is going to change her life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Like, one of the things I really... I mean, because we've done a lot of programs, but what I really like is it's, it's a super-duper, like, empowering program, yeah. right? You're just, yeah. like, every day, even when you don't want to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning like we do, you know, we're still, like, at the end of it, I'm, like, I'm pretty badass. You know, even if I didn't have, like, I couldn't do all the push-ups and everything like that. I mean, it was... It's a really kind of... Um, confidence building program which i really like look that was the we could have easily developed something that was just replication um or you know bring something into it that was okay and, and you got you some results uh there was a reason why we spent 18 months on this project um and you know there's a reason why we put that much effort and that much research and so much time into it and really went after this because we didn't want to just develop a program where it, it we wanted to develop a mixed martial arts style training program. We knew that. Um, there was no question. There was a gap in the library. We knew that this was going to be great. We knew that we could come from a different couple, a couple different angles with it, and people would enjoy it. They would see amazing results. But from that was just from the physical standpoint. Like, look, you exercising right, you're going to see physical results. That's just the reality of it. But we wanted to. We definitely wanted to go a step further with this, and that we wanted this this feeling of feeling like a badass and people feeling empowered and confident. And there is some, because we all know what happens when you exercise and your body releases endorphins and, and you know, it's a great antidepressant and there's also made the, the, the research is there, but there's something about exercising in this fashion that even that takes it up a notch that gets, when you get rid of the uh, you know, the, the burpees and the crunches and you bring in this, uh, and maybe it's aggression. Maybe it's just fighting aggression. I, I don't know what it is, but it's like I, I've been, you know, I, I have a lot of friends in the MMA world. I, I box with these guys on a weekly basis. They're some of the most calm, chill people you've ever met in your entire life. And it's opposite what most people think because you see, you see UFC, on, UFC on TV and they're beating the shit out of each other. But that's just that's their job, right? They go to work when it comes to that. But the training that they, go, they do is what we do in Court of Force. And the aggression that – comes out when their training is phenomenal to the point where once it's over, they're just smiling. They're always smiling. Like fight, like UFC, like MMA fighters are always smiling unless they're just assholes. But most of them are just smiling all the time because, and they're so nice when you meet them. And I think it really comes down to like this type of training, just you, you release so much aggression that you didn't even know you might have had. Um, and then it does, it brings a level of confidence where you feel like, you know, like is, we're not saying it's a self-defense program, but we wanted this to become something where if you felt, if you got backed into a corner, you had the confidence that you knew you could put your body into a punch. I mean, it's all these little things that we really, really wanted people to feel. And it's, it's been awesome to see the feedback. It's been nothing but positive. I mean, and you know, so far it's, it's breaking every record in beach by. So it's, it's so far so good. It went public now. Let's hope and hopefully the public feels the same way. 
For sure. I said the same thing. We've done, I think, almost just about every beach party program. And it's the first time literally where you get done with the first program and there's uh, the first workout and there's those add-ons. It's the first time that I actually, like, usually I don't do them. I literally was like, (laughs) and I'll find an excuse. And I I, I honestly have never done them terribly. This is the first time I, it's not even that I just add them on. I'm like, "Ah, I'll do it because I want to. I actually enjoy it. I'm like, no, we got to start right now. Like, let's do it. Let's make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, I, I, I know it sounds crazy because I, you know, I'm part of the, I created this program with Jericho. I'm a co-creator of it. But like, again, I like doing this stuff. Like I do it and, and I'm not someone who normally would. Like I'm the guy that I go, I'm a gym guy and I'm a, a boxing gym guy. And I honestly, I still put these things in and do them. I mean, and I have to mute myself. I was going to say that. That's going to be awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's like, and then the few times that we have though, because Brianne's doing it uh, with me. So you know, I want, like, I just kind of stand behind her and let her do it. I'm just, you know, get my own workout behind her. So, so but then I catch myself, like, because Jericho would be like, you ready, Joel? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, no. So I'm like answering the TV at that point. But, um, but no, it is something that like, I, I love this stuff. I mean, and this is, again, I'm telling you, and Justin and Diana, you guys know me and everyone else here, you can tell it's like, I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't true. And this is, this is fun stuff. And I think people are, uh, hopefully people are seeing that and it's real. It's not, it's sustainable. That's, and it's sustainable. We hope that people are just can continue to keep doing this and not just collect. They do, Hey, I did 30 days. I'm done. You know? Okay. Now what? Well, now you got the hybrid calendar. Now you got the deluxe calendar. Now you can like start figuring out how this works into your daily life. That's, that's what we're hoping. I actually do have one more question. I just saw recently you guys released like the, 2.0 um, of a couple of the workouts. So can you switch those out for like, is it, is it like MME speed 2.0 that you can switch with? Yeah, we super simple. Uh, MMA speed 2.0, MMA shred 2.0, just swap them out for the original speed and shreds. Um, it is not necessarily suggested though for people to do that if they're in their first 30 days. Okay. Oh, good they, are, they are, they are, they are 2.0s for a reason. Okay. They are upgrades. We, they're hard. <laughs> they're, they're harder. Um, so we, we suggest again, like for anybody. So as you guys are talking to your customers and, and clients about this, um, you know, get them on the base kit, tell them to do the base kit from start to finish day one through 30, follow its entirety and then throw deluxe at them, then throw the 2.0s at them. Like that's, that's the stuff that, because again, you throw everything out in the one time, they're going to sample everything and there's nothing new. Now I'm now like, well, now what? Um, so the first 30 days do it. That's how we ran the test groups. And then that we're like, okay, now start incorporating other stuff. Fantastic. Fantastic. No, that's great. That's great to know. All right, everybody. Um, I want to be respectful of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and cut this short or cut it, off, cut it off. But I do want to say, Joel, really honestly, man, thank you so much. Honestly, like, we know that you don't have to do this. So taking the time out of your night, I know you play it down, but seriously, thank you. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys. You know, I love you guys. Uh, you know, hopefully it's not freezing up where you are right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it was out in my robe in the morning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's cold. I mean, I would tell you it was 74 today here. Oh, and I had to nope. COVID, but I don't want to brag too much, <laughs> but it was yeah. nice. Uh, no, Hey, look, we love you guys and everyone else, you know, what it is, is always, we just say thank you uh, because you, you guys are the ones that um, you're like, I will do this every single day, every single night for the rest of my life. If it means getting more information out to everybody, because I want all of you to be the experts in this program to the point where when you start talking to your customers and clients about this, it's basically as if Jericho or I are talking to them. That's, that's what we want. We, there's no reason for us to withhold any information about this product. Um, that's not going to benefit anybody if we do that. So yeah, absolutely. Anytime, you know, you guys all know I'm here for you and you know where to find me. Well, thank you much, man. You guys, everybody have a great night. We appreciate your time all and right. we'll see you guys all soon. Thanks, Thanks again. Guys. You guys have Bye. a great night. Bye.